So Prince Harry has been refused permission to appeal the court's decision over his challenge against the Home Office's decision to reduce his automatic security when he visits the UK. Um, if all of that wasn't enough, uh, this is not the only uh, application for permission to appeal that he will make because he can also make the same application to the appellate court. So if you're confused by the headlines, uh, don't worry about that because this is an ongoing battle between him and the Home Office. If you've caught my previous videos, essentially what this means is instead of him getting automatic security provisions when he visits the UK, it is to be decided on an ad hoc case-by-case -case basis. And he was challenging that on two grounds in separate claims. One was that he wanted to pay for it himself, which was refused, and the other was to challenge the decision itself, the decision to re remove his automatic security and replace it with an ad hoc uh, provision. So he initially lost that challenge a month or so ago, and now he has been refused permission to appeal that decision for the first time. So that's why I said in uh, previous videos that some of the headlines I felt were somewhat misleading because they said Harry is appealing this decision, which is not entirely accurate because you need permission to appeal, as I've said in previous videos. Um, but now he's been refused permission to appeal uh, for the first time, and he will seek a renewal of that application for permission to appeal to the Court of Appeal. Um, I did a previous video, I said count the number of appeals in the, in the video. Um, but this is an ongoing battle and it's only costing more and more money. Now, not forgetting that this case is brought essentially by the king uh, because it, he's part of the royal family, um, as in Prince Harry is part of the royal family. So you'll notice in the documents, this is the king on the application of etc. And so the costs implications are also very interesting because um, not only is Harry obviously going to have to pay for his own costs, but there's been a small reduction, as the judge put it, a modest yet significant reduction of 10% um, of the cost that he's liable for, for the Home Office's costs. Now, I do also take issue with something that I've read on uh, X a little while ago, a few weeks ago, where somebody said that the, well, they implied that the um, government legal lawyers are not very good because they're some of the most lowest paid lawyers in the country. I really take issue with that statement because how much you get paid as a lawyer doesn't reflect how good you are or how senior you are. It might just reflect what your fees are set at, what you're willing to do the work for. And notoriously, government work and civil servant type work is not as well paid as big corporate and things like that. So if you wanted to earn big bucks as a lawyer, then working for government legal is probably not the way to go about it. But obviously the people that do that have a real sensibility about them. That's what they want to do. They either love the work or they feel a real sense of doing the work. So I feel that was a really unfair criticism of those lawyers. So I just had to say that in this video. But nonetheless, um, the order for costs has been reduced by 10%. But um, per a Freedom of Information request a few weeks ago, those costs of the government department are in the region of half a million pounds. So assuming that Harry's are roughly the same, that's going to be roughly a million pounds worth of costs, just the costs themselves. And that's without him going to the next stage of permission to appeal. So this could again uh, even spiral the costs even further. But as I predicted in my previous video, which I'll link below, I said I don't think he's um, going to get permission to appeal. He hasn't. Um, and even if he did and he went on to a substantial appeal, I don't think that will be successful anyway. Because the judges essentially describe this as, um, as I read in the newspapers, I haven't seen the documents myself, but the newspapers describe it as um, being frankly hopeless in parts, according to the judge and what he said about this case. So ultimately, even if he does get permission to appeal from the appellate court, which I don't think he will, then I don't think it's going to be successful in the substantive appeal if he gets permission and it goes on to a substantive appeal. I don't think it'll get that far. And even if it does, I don't think it'll be successful. Now, this is not me in any way intending to skew uh, the court process. Of course, the court is going to do that all by itself. Uh, so no worries by anybody about um, my videos here having any effect on the court whatsoever. So I hope you found that an interesting update. Please do subscribe. We are rapidly growing this channel. 120,000 subscribers now. I thank you all so much and I'll see you in the next one.